Okay, Dilpit, go ahead. Start. Yes. Right. A very good evening to one and all present in this webinar today. This is the webinar organized by Sexual Medicine Committee, FOXI, in collaboration with the Midlife Management Committee, FOXI, and Public Awareness Committee, Indian Menopause Society. So, um, I take this opportunity to invite our chair for medicine, Foxy, Dr. Neera Jadav, to give overview of the event and about the importance of sexual health in the overall well-being of an individual. I welcome you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dilpit. So, good evening. And on behalf of Sexual Medicine Committee, Foxy, uh, Midlife Management Committee, Foxy, and Public Awareness Committee, uh, IMS, I welcome everyone, all the faculty, all the delegates to this webinar that is on Midlife and Beyond. Uh, I'm thankful to both of uh, Dr. Sijers as well as Dr. Binal for uh, making this uh, possible. Why? Because uh, sexual health and function are essential component of the care of menopausal women. Most menopausal women consider sex to be an important part of their life and strongly desire to maintain a robust sexual life. However, the risk of the acquiring comorbidity that adversely affect sexual satisfaction and function, as well as the risk for the using medication that affects the sexual function, increase as women age. Although sexual dysfunction and dysfunction are highly prevalent in the perimenopausal and postmenopausal women, but very few disclose their concern to the healthcare providers. Thus, healthcare providers should be proactive and routinely query perimenopausal and menopausal patients about their sex satisfaction with the sex and their sexual functioning. If sexual dysfunction or dysfunction is suspected, then a full medical and social history with a focused question about the factor that affect the sexual function should be undertaken. Question about living situation should be fully explored because menopause often coincides with the life testing event like children living home, sick parent, events such as a uh, loss of a partner, and discovering <laughs> the etiology and identifying the modifiable factor that influence the sexual function will help in the defining appropriate treatment. Finally, sexual health in menopausal women and their partner is important. Age-related decline in the sexual function may significantly reduce quality of life. Increased recognition by the physicians and validation of patient concern, as well as expanded discussion about the sexual dysfunction with the patient may offer an opportunity for effective intervention and improve the quality of life for the affected woman. Uh, and I'm thankful to our president, Dr. Rishika Spicer, our secretary general, Dr. Madhuri Patel, Madam, our Vice President in charge, uh, Dr. Asa Bakshi, Madam, Alka Pandey, Madam, and the Rasudra Pradeep, Madam, who always ask and encouraging our uh, to us about the spreading the uh, knowledge of the sexual health. So, with this note, I welcome everyone once again, and I'm sure that after today's uh, webinar, you will be take this uh, sexual health in your menopausal as well as perimenopausal patient very seriously and try to help them out, figure out their concern because they are very hesitant in that group. And this group is very, uh, as far as the sexual uh, health is concerned, this group is very neglected uh, group because we hardly think that they have also had their sexual health is very important. So uh, as a chairperson of the sexual medicine committee, uh, we are trying to reach all the uh, FOXI members and today we have IMS member also, they, although they are also part of the FOXI member, so uh, I'm sure uh, it will give a new insight in your uh, patient about uh, to think about the problem of the sexual health in this age group. With this note, I welcome everyone and uh, over to you, Dilpreet, for further proceeding. Thank you, sir. Uh, now coming to after listening to the sir's that, words about ah, before that, uh, Dilpreet, uh, we have a very uh, important announcement uh, to make. Uh, 4 September is celebrated as a World Sexual Health Day worldwide, and this year Foxy is celebrating in a big big way. So we have a uh, 
two competition for this uh, uh, health day. And uh, Aman, or uh, please share the PPT for the competition. Can Karan Aman or uh, yeah, Bhubika, yes, yeah. Sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Sure. Because the uh, uh, theme of this year uh, for the World Sexual Day, Health Day, that is on 4th September, is on the consent. And we have a one uh, event is for the individual, and the second event is for the society. Uh, Bhubika? Uh, yeah. So this first event is that is a poster and slogan competition that has to be by every member or any individual can take part in it. Uh, just uh, so we have so many uh, artists in our proxy society. So just uh, try to make a slogan. It can be either in Hindi or English and send it to uh, on the email ID before 31st uh, August. And uh, on the uh, that another event is by the uh, to be done by the society. That uh, event is uh, uh, where what we want uh, you organize some public awareness or some rally or a walk uh, in your city uh, with involving uh, all other NGO or school or colleges and try to focus on this uh, year's theme that is consent and spread the awareness why consent is important and. After uh, you can be, uh, do that event before third or on the third and send uh, your entries uh, uh, to us uh, on the 4th of the September. So for both of this uh, competition, we have uh, attractive prizes to be won. So please do post this activity to spread the awareness and send your entries to us. Uh, we will send you the details uh, on your email also after this program. So I'm sure you will uh, make this event uh, mo most successful and send your entries in both of the events. So, thank you, thank you. Go ahead, uh, Bill, please. Well, because it's okay now, no problem. Thank Stop you. Stop setting. Yeah. After this overview uh, about the sexual health in midlife and after the menopause in women, I would like to show you a video. You must, many of you must have seen it. This message is getting circulating in WhatsApp. There's a very good message which shows that desire never fade. It doesn't fade with the couple shooting on an old song. So I'll play that. It portrays a great bonding between them. We should not ignore the feelings and sexuality after midlife and after the menopause. Sex and sexuality in a broader perspective, it gives information about the overall well-being of an individual. So it covers so many components about their companionship, how they feel about each other. So let's watch this video. Sexuality is a broader term. Yeah. It includes, yeah.
Yes, Dilpil. So after this uh, wonderful, this interesting orientation about today's webinar, so now we move on further. Now I would like to introduce our esteemed chief guest for the event. First of all is our uh, Secretary General Foxy, Dr. Madhuri Patel. Um, Ma'am is somehow not able to join today. And uh, Dr. Pushpa Sethi, Madam is present. President and ma'am is also not available, but ma'am has sent a video message encouraging words for us for today's webinar. And all the best to you. I'm in Vietnam right now, so I'm really sorry could not send the message in time. I'm uh, sending it right now. I hope you're able to play it. Uh, all my best to you uh, on this webinar, Foxy and uh, IMS uh, committee also. Uh, sexuality in midlife is a very, very important subject. And in every talk that we talk of genital urinary syndrome of menopause or any other thing where, uh, you know, the holistic approach to menopause is concerned, we are talking regularly about healthy sexual life for the couples in this age group because as we know medically also scientifically also if we have a healthy sexual life it is very good for the vaginal symptoms for the changes in the vagina that happen during menopause and all the atrophic changes that happen it is uh, you know it sort of uh, dilates the vagina brings a better blood supply and so it is very healthy Think that once there is menopause, once you have crossed 50, the sexual life has to come to an end. I think this is a very integral part of the relationship between a man and a woman. And um, sexuality, sexual life have to be maintained at all costs. And I'm really happy to see that you're having a webinar on this subject and wish you all the best and a very good bye-bye uh, uh, and uh, good morning to you all, all of you from Vietnam right now. Thank Thank you so much, ma'am. We extend a heartfelt thanks for such a lovely message. Uh, now the guest of honor for today's event, Dr. Asha Bakshi, ma'am. Yeah, madam, we'll join in short time. Ma'am is at Sexual Medicine Committee, Foxy. Yeah, madam, we'll join uh, later. Yes, ma'am will be joining shortly. And uh, our second guest of honor is Dr. Yashodhra Pradeep. Madam is Vice President Foxy in charge, Midlife Management Committee Foxy. Soon will ma'am will also join to give her blessings. And uh, another guest of honor for today is Dr. Arti Gupta, ma'am. Ma'am is Secretary, Indian Menopausal Society. I think ma'am is there with us in the meeting. Yeah, uh, yeah, she has joined. Uh, 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 madam had joined. Arti ji, are you there? Uh, right now, ma'am is not there. Uh, and Dr. Alka Pandey, ma'am. Vice President Foxy. Uh, Madam, uh, is the Vice President of Foxy. Please uh, uh, bless us with your kind words. Uh, Alka, Madam, are you there? Uh, no, I, I couldn't find was, her. Uh, yeah, Abhiti, uh, Abhiti. Uh, okay. Maybe some connectivity issues. Okay, no problem. So we'll wait for the, whenever ma'am join. Uh, yeah. we'll... Okay. Have words. So next, we move on to the scientific session. I can see Dr. Narendra Mulhotra, sir. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Uh, before, the, before, uh, uh, the, before we start the program, let's uh, have an input from the Saijas, Dr. Saijas and Dr. Binal. Uh, yes, Dr. Saijas, please. Uh, Saijas, few words from you. Yeah, yeah, yeah yes, yes, yes. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you so much, Neeraj, for this collaboration. I think I bring greetings from the Midlife Management Committee of Foxy. Thank you so much for collaborating with us. And so also a committee uh, of Indian Menopause Society, uh, a wonderful organization doing some significant amount of research and work uh, related to spreading awareness on this field. Uh, since I have, a, I have a, um, a, a topic and a talk to give, I'll keep my words short and not uh, uh, take any more of your time. Rest of it, I think, uh, would be along with my lecture. So thank you for the collaboration. It's always a pleasure for the committee to collaborate with you, Neeraj. And uh, congrats for all the uh, good work so you're doing Neeraj and best wishes for the upcoming programs. I'm sure we we'll have a like lot more together. Foxy, thank you so much. for Dilpris, Arthi Madam is there. Just in thank you, sir. Yeah, Dr. Arti Gupta, ma'am, has joined Neeraj Bhai. Yes yes, 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 yes. Yes, we welcome you, ma'am, Dr. Arti Gupta, ma'am. Uh, guest of honor for today. Ma'am, uh, can you please uh, bless us with a few words? Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, I am really happy that Dr. Neeraj Zadav and Dr. Bhinal, all of you, Dr. 
shy just all of you have invited me as a uh, guest of honor and uh, i think it's a very important topic on which you have organized by the sexual medicine committee midlife management committee poxy and public awareness committee of indian menopause society it's a great pleasure for me to be here and i will like to pay my regards to all my seniors dr rishikesh pai dr madhuri patel dr asha bakshi dr alka pande and dr madhuri dikshit dr pushpa sethi and all the seniors dr shodra pradeep and i think uh, this is the subject uh, on which all of we should come forward and we should discuss to our patients because this is a on to talk neither we as a doctor and nor our patients who will like to want to talk on this even there are so many patients who are from the doctor community only who are having so many problems related to the sexual problem sexual medicine problem but none of us come forward to talk about our problems it may be uh, uh, erectile dysfunctions it may be uh, vaginal atrophy there may be so many reasons and other uh, problems related to the sexual medicine so i think this is doctors and the patient or and the patients all should come forward to discuss about it uh, i think we are very short of time i should pay my thanks to all of you thank you thank you so much thank you binal thank you thank you, you thank you thank you dilpit asha bakshi madam is asha ma'am is also asha bakshi ma'am is uh, with us good evening ma'am thank you so much for joining uh, kindly we would like to have some few encouraging words from you ma'am regarding today's webinar thank you very much for the kind word and, and uh, i think dr neeraj ne to sexual medicine pe dhamaka hi macha diya hai i think everyone is these days talking about sexual medicine and we are so impressed that in the vp conference that we are going to have from 20th uh, october to 21st october uh, we have decided to keep one public awareness program only on sexual medicine so this is how he's the man behind this and uh, he's really doing good job and uh, so nice to see all of you here and to see dr narendra malhotra and uh, deepa and the i can't see here but i'm sure she is around and uh, vedi uh, ruma my dear friend binal i've not seen her since long time so and dr rajinder nagarkatti uh, apurva best of luck apurva so i think thank you so much, much and uh, i think it's very important that the session should have more time rather than us so thanks a lot again for inviting me and all the best thank you asa thank you ma'am thank you thank you ma'am uh, now i invite dr binal shah for saying few words yeah good afternoon everybody and uh, thanks to the sexual medicine committee foxy and dr neeraj bhai for making this word no more a tab thing something which is so essential to survival like i feel that sexuality is something which definitely never ends at midlife on the contrary it gets a boost again so we are here to discuss a very very vital topic and i feel we should begin with the discussion thank you so much for collaborating with indian menopause society public awareness committee thank you thank, thank you ma'am thanks for the now i would like to uh, move on to the scientific session so first of all we will start with the panel discussion and i invite moderators for the this panel discussion uh, first is dr ruma shukla madam is west zone coordinator of sexual medicine committee foxy and dr apurva datta national coordinator of sexual medicine committee foxy and our own candidate for the post of chair person sexual medicine committee our best wishes to you yes, dr apurva yes. uh, thank, thank you so much continue take up What are you, uh, Ruma? Ruma ji, and Apurva, take over. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Ruma, ma'am. Unmute yourself, uh, Ruma ji. You are muted. Ah. Ah. No, no, you are still muted. Ah. Good evening, everyone. Uh, today we are going to discuss the menopause. we all know it's a greek word and menopause means cessation of of cessation of life because by that time the women is having more time 
they are rather more free because their uh, duty of uh, kids rearing is uh, almost over they are economically well off and uh, they have more time for to spend with each other so this is the period which during which a uh, women can enjoy their life and they can have a good quality of life so menopause is a end of life what was happening in the past that time in history shows that menopause was taken as a disease it was taken as a disaster and the kind of treatment they were the, these women were provided were horrific because they were put on leeches in vagina cervix cold water was put on their abdomen and this was all kind of treatment available during that time but it is not so in research we should proceed and what we how we can help our women at this age today we are going to discuss with it uh, apurva can you share the slides there is some problem i am yeah. unable to share i will i will i will mask so to discuss how to manage the menopause women what kind of treatment we can provide we have a very good expert panelist with us they are all senior and good in academics i'm going to invite our panelist first dr shamima she is a professor in eastern Dr. Preeti Niranjan, she is a past president from Vadodara Society. Dr. Vedehi Marathe, she is a past president from Nagpur Society and past chairperson PSC and MOGS. Uh, are you going to tell another others, uh, Purva? Dr. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. So on behalf of Sexual Medicine Committee, I welcome to you all and thank you so much. Uh, so we have a, as ma'am has already told, So today the our sincere effort is to deal Dekhle with bhai. all of us to when a patient of perimenopausal and menopausal patient lady are coming. So how to deal with their problems, sexual problems and what advice we are doing. Uh, so we have a esteemed panelist. The next is Dr. Vandana uh, Buriyar, ma'am. Ma'am is the associate professor at PGI Rohtak, a mm -hmm. member of the Sexual Medicine mm -hmm. Committee. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, ma'am. Welcome, ma'am. Deepa Mukundan again doesn't need any introduction. South Zone coordinator of uh, 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 the Midlife Committee and just immediate past secretary of the Trichy Obvious Society. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Dr. Deepa, for coming. And our own uh, Dr. Rajendra Nagarkati, sir. Again, uh, sir, doesn't need any introduction. Sir is the just immediate past chairperson of the Midlife Committee. So thank you all of you and for joining us. Over to you, Ruma, ma'am, for uh, start the panel discussion. Yeah. So, to all my panelists, I think this panel is going to interesting one. To start with the first question, I'm going to ask from Dr. Shamima. Shamima, how you will define menopause and what should be, what are the various symptoms of menopause through which a woman is facing with? Dr. Shamima. No, she is uh, not there. We can pass out. Yeah. Yes, Dr. Samima is not there. Yeah. Okay. Then we can uh, take this question to Dr. Preeti Niranjan. Yes. Preeti? Uh, yes. yes. I'm, uh, I'm audible to you all? Yes. Yes, you are audible. Yes. audible. Uh, my woman comes to us with lots of questions and she's quite confused. She may like to talk to you. She may like that she doesn't have a specific complaint, but still she wants that you should listen to her. This is the first sign that she has got a smart a start of the menopausal symptoms, especially when she says that she's confused, she forget the things, uh, she cannot concentrate, uh, she may get irritated, she has got lots of mood changes, everything. Then you have to give special time to such patients. And these are the start, not only the uh, menstrual changes, which we consider in the perimenopausal period, things also in uh, menopausal changes. Uh, Madam, do you ask these ladies about their sexual life also? Because yes. this is also very important. Yes, yes, uh, you are right. Uh, you, uh, if, uh, usually I ask them about the relationship between the husband and wife how it is going, whether it is smooth or not. And uh, it's uh, what I observe 
that in lots of time when they go through between the age of 45 and 50 if they are not well dressed they remain very lazy they look very betarti um, bolte uh, hamare hindi mein then you can consider that relationship is not going well and i will say that help me roses to say thanks to me that because of my counseling their relationship has normalized so i always ask it these patients they usually tell you ki hamari to family complete ho gayi hai ab hame sex se kya matlab how do you counsel them uh, usually uh, uh, there are few women they feel but i prefer that i should meet they with their husbands after my opd time and they come to me and we i talk to both each uh, what uh, what are the expectations of husband and what are the expectations of wife you should have the pace between the each other koi bhage aur koi thoda dheeme daude aisa nahi ho sakta because i in my practice i always tell them this is the time when husband may get involved in a extra marital relationship so try to find out why it happens and once we uh, tell the wife to about it she gets a lot of changes in her attitude and towards the sexuality also and towards her dressing and everything be practical yes. in life yes right. actually sex depends shows us that it is for procreation pleasure pleasure and completed procreation part but still partnership and pleasure part is there so during the rest of the life they can enjoy this uh, apurva can you take the next question sure ma'am uh so as uh, preeti ma'am has already very uh, correctly said what when a patient a lady are coming a menopausal or perimenopausal lady in our opd we are asking everything every a from a to z but we are actually avoiding rather i should say avoiding asking about their sexual life so this is very important we should it also now uh, the next question what effects will be menopause um, on the sex life i would like to um, uh, dr rajin nagar katti sir Uh, sir, yeah, sorry, I, yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, first of all, I wish to thank uh, uh, all the committees uh, for uh, inviting me here today to be a part of uh, this wonderful webinar. Uh, uh, Doctor Nia, uh, uh, Doctor Apurva, uh, everyone, uh, and yes, the question is: What effects will menopause have on uh, sex life? Uh, basically what happens is that with menopause as we all know there is a decrease in the estrogen uh, uh, levels and with that there is uh, there are changes in the vaginal epithelium the epithelium becomes thinner and uh, with that there is uh, less amount of uh, lactic acid uh, bacilli that is uh, being uh, uh, produced and the correspondingly a decrease uh, in the lactic acid level levels the ph and uh, thereby these things bring about uh, painful uh, uh, relations uh, dyspareunia and ultimately it's like a vicious cycle they lose their sex drive as the slide is showing you they no longer uh, are interested in sex there is a total loss of libido and uh, that when uh, uh, the things like what ruma ma'am was explaining about the partnership that starts becoming uh, difficult and then they they may look uh, you know pleasures etc so that is why we as gynecologists we are the first people to see them at this stage of life and we have to even if they don't come out because um, very often they don't come out with these problems by themselves so it is our job to sort of bring out the problems in them make them uh, uh, you know come out with uh, whether actually they have any problem with their sex life and if so uh we can treat them because this is something which is definitely treatable i would like uh, to lean also now. reason fatigue is the reason also because they get exhausted if the woman is working she is on the verge of the retirement she gets a lot of work her their children are young and they have got their own now grandchildren then they don't get the time so i always tell them at least twice a week keep your evenings free from your workload that also helps them yeah and and basically uh, that is with the time as you said, rightly said that they are very often you know uh, re retired or semi retired from their work and uh, this is the time where we have to you 
you know, some kind of, uh, uh, you know, their own self. It's like living for yourself because all this time they have been living for their children, for their, uh, you know, in-laws and things like that. So this is the time where they have to come out of the shell and try to uh, live for themselves. Absolutely. Uh, correctly said. So there is a lot of uh, physical, psychological and physiological changes in perimenopausal and menopausal, which actually cause this type of symptoms, whether it's a, a night sweats, whether it's a mute swing, instability, or uh, there's a body disfigurement. And most often, actually, these are people are considered ki bhai, ab to bhai bhajan and kirtan ka time aa gaya hai. why we should talk about this, why we should think about it. So this is uh, one thing uh, I think the people are uh, not thinking about this symptom. And most often people are actually coming with the different symptoms of the menopause, but not with this complaint. So this is again one of the main problem and which cause um, this complaint untreatable, unidentified so this is uh, what is the causes of uh, the dysfunction by the menopause symptoms. Uh, so, uh, Ruma, ma'am, yeah. over to you. For the next question, I invite Dr. Vaidehi. Dr. Vaidehi, uh, what do uh, you think? Ruma, what are uh, the... Vaidehi is uh, there? Vaidehi, ma'am, is uh, some, in some emergencies, you will be joining Okay, shortly. okay. Yeah. Then uh, I will ask this from Vandana. Vandana Buria. Yes, yes ma'am. Yeah. What do you think? What are the ways, various sexual dysfunction during perimenopausal and menopause? We should go ahead with it. How we can help them? So sexual dysfunctions due to all the hormonal changes that has already told. Uh, the sexual uh, dysfunctions in the menopausal females can be they can be interest in arousal disorders. They can be orgasmic disorder and dysperunia, especially due to vaginal atrophy. To, to de all these things, patient may complain simultaneously or one or the other complaint may be there and decrease in arousal and there is delay in arousal actually. The de arousal is always delayed and uh, so we are, various mechani uh, mechanisms due to all, mainly all is due to the changes in hormones, decreased estrogen and vaginal atrophy, further mood changes also leads to all these things. So there we can, to get away with all these things, they can be pharmacological as well as non-pharmacological methods. And to our patients, we should first go with the non-pharmacological treatment. First of all, we should counsel them. Psychological counseling should be the first step. You know, with uh, that, uh, the life stressing events. So detailed history should be taken regarding their relationship status, regarding their, whether the kids have left the home and they are staying alone, the, the relationship with the partner, this all history should be taken. And, it, and the, the sexual uh, history, whether there are extended periods of abstinence, whether actually there is intercourse or any relation with the husband or not, so all this history should be taken. And uh, we should counsel our parent, uh, patients, we should counsel them uh, that uh, they increase age has increased changes are there but they need to explore themselves they need to explore the emotional physical needs and they need to you know uh, find to have to be creative to find different ways and uh, different approaches she can help herself uh, medical uh, treatment she can take for whatever problem she is taking. If there's if there are mood changes, she can have a psychological counseling. If go for a specialist to rule out vaginal atrophy and all, so she should first explore herself. First is this, and then among the non pharmacological treatment, uh, we should always advise the women to increase their physical activity. The physical activity always it elevates the mood. Reduce the anxiety uh, well, and increase uh, the. Well, we will take up this in the next question. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I thought ma'am had uh, asked me to, you know, uh, tell about the management. Too. Yeah. So for the next question, I will invite Dr. Deepa. Deepa, yeah. how, what they, they, we can do to improve the sexual health? before and after the menopause. Shall we start this management pre-menopausal 
or once the symptoms will appear? What's your opinion? Non-pharmacological uh, treatment. First of all, thank you, Dr. Neeraj and uh, Sexual Medicine Committee for this wonderful opportunity. It's a wonderfully charted program. Uh, thank you for that question, ma'am. Uh, I think um, uh, who doesn't need uh, tender loving care? All of us at any point of time. Uh, so I think uh, first thing should be tender loving care. Uh, simple things like hugging, kissing and touching can enhance uh, the love hormone called oxytocin and uh, in fact improve the uh, harmony between the couple. So um, that's the first line and uh, we have to like uh, advise them to be physically active. Uh, it is more uh, for their own uh, bone health and muscle health and everything, especially during the menopausal age group. And uh, the, uh, and in fact, physical activity will enhance the um, uh, pleasure during sex as well as the endurance. So that's very important uh, to keep uh, physically fit. And uh, definitely we have to advise them not to indulge in smoking or at least lower the uh, smoking uh, uh, alcohol intake drugs etc because as they get older the arteries can get clogged and there can be problems with uh, arousal orgasm uh, as well as performance so um, avoid, uh, it's better to avoid uh, smoking alcohol and uh, any drugs and uh, uh, they should be advised to have sex more often um, because it increases the vaginal blood flow uh, so that uh, the uh, the vaginal blood flow uh, keeps up the immunity as well as uh, enhances the production of um, uh, lactobacillus to some extent and uh, uh, promotes uh, healthy sexual uh, pleasures. And um, they also need to, some, some people, they have uh, difficulties with arousal. Some people have difficulties with uh, orgasm. So uh, it's important uh, for them. The couple should find out what is best for them. Uh, so they have to spend more time uh, in uh, foreplay so that the uh, appropriate um, uh, lubrication happens and sex is more pleasurable and uh, more uh, uh, lovable uh, uh, during this phase. And also men have problems with uh, uh, arousal also. Uh, especially if they are on some drugs or they are having diabetes or some other things. And um, they also have to uh, practice uh, pelvic floor exercise, especially women, because pelvic floor exercises, again, uh, they enhance uh, uh, vaginal blood flow, they strengthen the immunity and uh, uh, also uh, it, uh, promotes orgasmic uh, uh, function. Uh, it is also important, uh, nowadays people are using a lot of um, uh, 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 to, to keep up the um, good smell and all that they use some uh, uh, smelly yeah. agents uh, so it's uh, better to avoid them because uh, they can produce some uh, vaginal irritation the vaginal immunity will be less at this time uh, so it's better to avoid all those things um, and uh, just use lubricants um, and um, the ideal time to start uh, is not after menopause or not after symptoms happen. It is during the premenopausal, perimenopausal period, actually. So that is a time when they come for any other issue. We can start uh, questioning them and counseling them about these uh, issues. Because uh, 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 after the symptoms happen, it is difficult to treat. Uh, they have to keep up the uh, 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 vaginal blood flow and other things going so that uh, atrophy doesn't set in so easily. And even recurrent UTI is very common um, after menopause. Uh, and if, uh, the more the ha sex they have, uh, that reduces the incidence of uh, recurrent urinary tract infection. Especially very true, very true Deepa. What I advise my patient to keep intimacy time aside. During that time, koi dood ubalna nahi, koi kukar ki city nahi baje. They should enjoy that time together. And what's happening nowadays? The life expectancy has increased a lot more. And even the treatment for male problems like erectile dysfunction is properly and good treatment is available. So our women should be fit to enjoy their sexual life. Uh, next and question. Uh, counseling uh, right to add. Uh, I forgot to mention that they can take a counseling uh, as a couple if there are some issues. I forgot to mention that. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, one, one, thing like, one thing I would like yeah, to yeah, add. Yeah, yeah, uh, all the medical uh, problems, whatever it is, diabetes, hypertension, they also should be optimized. Good. That is true. That is very important. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. Um, uh, Preeti, ma'am. Uh, uh, yes. What is the role of counseling? 
because you know uh, what happened we in our opds we are doing obstetrics we are doing gynecology mm -hmm. we have a laparoscopy we have to do ivf you have to attend the webinar we have to make the ppt so we are actually very hurry in our opds so we often forget to give adequate time uh, for the history and the, for the counseling uh, this is one part so ma'am uh, i just wanted to ask from you priti ma'am what is the role of counseling and what should be done in this case especially I when the like, ladies coming with the menopause yeah. i would like to say one thing that be, um, counseling is the best part of the sexual medicine because lots of things can be corrected only with the counseling this is one i understand that we are very busy practitioners but we can give a separate time to them separate day to them and they are happy to come on that time and that time up uh, that slot of the period second i will like to tell each and every audience that that time our staff should not come again and again to our room there should not be any mobile phone there should not be any disturbance even if we, we can charge them more from the couple they don't mind it but they do, they get distracted with the uh, incoming disturbances so we should choose some room separate uh, consultation room where there is no routine work is being done and then we can listen to them listening should be more and after the listening we should not judge them is very important point we should not judge them we should be a good listener and then we should give them a very small tips how to solve this problem because in my practice i have found that they consider you matlab uh, we as a gynecologist as a healthcare personnel as a neutral person so things will not go beyond to the society members or their family members and they remain always open to us so both should be counseled at the same time and even if they complain about each other we should be always neutral in listening to them and counseling to them i think uh, important point over here uh, yeah. just yeah. i wanted to mention that uh, as uh, dr deepa also has mentioned and dr preeti also it's important to uh, stress upon the fact that they need to have uh, sexual relations one in a way it does not mean that just because you are menopausal uh, there is uh, uh, i mean it, that sex should be out of in fact it is uh, help to create a healthy vagina and uh, you know i remember this famous uh, dialogue which is uh, was said by dr prakash kotari uh, who is a, a pioneer and a doyen in the field of sexuality he always used to say in his talks that use it or lose it so if you uh, especially so for men if they uh, you know if they don't have sex for more than 2 months 3 months at a stretch at that age after uh, maybe 60 or after 55 then uh, they may start getting erectile dysfunction and therefore it is important for male men also to be able to uh, you know perform well and not just you know so that is why the couple therapy becomes very important if you just treat the female part it may not be sufficient from the female point of view having sex again improves the vaginal epithelium the lubrication there is a self lubrication and we don't need the uh, you know the medicated uh, lubricants or uh, moisturizers which are available so i think that point needs to be stressed uh, very truly uh, said dr nagakandi yeah. and in uh, counseling... rupa madam uh, dr samima is joined so just okay. Okay. hello yeah yeah, Sorry. yeah sure. welcome samima yes. I I got to receive something. Yeah. Okay. And during counseling part, one important factor is the important point is that confidentiality. We have to clear them that this all questions answers will be confidential, okay. and we have to earn their trust. Then only she they will come out of their problem. They will tell us their problems. So what is the next question, Apurva? Yeah. regarding uh, this absolutely uh, before i yeah before i that just what i am doing like i am a obstetrician so i have a uh, two or three hours a separate opd in the evening time so and i have a fixed questioner so uh, when they are in the waiting area i give the couples or the individual that question asks and when they are coming to us and i i just told ki i will tone out that questioner i will tone out that and it is whatever be there it should be between us so when we are dealing with this problem sexual history uh, and uh, sexual problem so we have to very particular in our mind ki they are actually giving their very intimate things so we should uh, give them utmost care and with utmost you know confidentiality it should not be go to outside so this is very important about counseling yes what the rajendra sir has to 
hold couple therapy is very important because every couple has their own demands every couple have like whenever it is a sexual intercourse suppose that if the uh, you know couple or the female is not comfortable with that particular uh, sex position so due to the body disfigurement we should discuss with that that what uh, you know uh, what position you want which time is comfortable for you for example a lot of time the technique uh, you know as uh, already uh, rajan sir has told uh, that couples are so much exhausted so they are, are asking the when to do have this intercourse so it is the early morning time because when the, they are again re-energetic and uh, they are really refreshed so this can be we can advise we can discuss what is their needs and we have to ask the patient we have to counsel the patient to have that particular things so it is always individualized treatment individualized con counseling and it is not like this one two three and this apply for everybody it should not be so that is the thing yeah uh, uh, over to you ruma ma'am uh, dr shami ma'am do i still need to practice safe sex after menopause many times these ladies ask you this question whether if whether they may get pregnant or not how you will explain them and what how you will proceed for that definitely madam we have to practice safe sex even after menopause because the less estrogens they are more prone to actually sexually transmitted diseases so it's always better that they use if if they are in mono, monogamous relations of uh, okay then it's fine and uh, otherwise uh, you have to use barrier contraception uh, to prevent the stis i have uh, ma'am just and, want to add even I even monogamous i think and also yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. Mm, yes, sir. Please, sir. Rajan, sir. Yeah. Something. I was saying, even in monogamous uh, relationship, yes, uh, maybe it is not necessary at that stage of life from contraception point of view, but definitely so it is necessary from prevention of uh, sexually transmitted diseases, and uh, so therefore, it's what is important is that uh, the males especially have to put on the condom even before they start any kind of uh, uh, practicing some other yes. Uh, yeah. yeah so that condom becomes a very important part of uh, uh, the sexual activity yes. from both After points of view. yes because we have seen pregnancies natural pregnancies even at 44 and 45 so of course contraception also becomes a uh, yeah but then it is here it is mainly for prevention of stis infections yeah. why these women are more predisposed for infection stis yes Shreema? they are because they are because of the less estrogen, the uh, vagina is more prone uh, for injuries and their dryness is there. So because of that, they are more prone for uh, sexually transmitted diseases. So it's very important. But many people, they ignore this fact. Yes. So they yes. think they are safe once yeah. they are. Ladies, we say that you have to wear a condom but we have to explain them that they are exposed to infections. Yes, yes, yes. 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 So, Dr. Uh, have... Nagar Khatti, what are the uh, pharmacological treatments available for this? Uh, yeah, I think the first and foremost, the best treatment uh, would be uh, a local, yeah, I was just going to say that. So, local estrogen therapy is actually the one of the best treatments because it uh, acts uh, both as uh, improving the vaginal uh, epithelium, uh, it prevents uh, the infections, it prevents recurrent uh, urinary tract infections, and uh, obviously it being in a gel form, it also brings about a little bit of lubrication. So uh, generally, uh, the local estrogen therapy which is available today is either there is estriol, uh, available as Evalon or uh, there is a Primarin, which is the conjugated estrogen. So, in fact, for some reason, I, the Evalon is somehow not available nowadays. Uh, it is out of stock, but uh, we still have Primarin or conjugated estrogens which are being used. The good part about using local estrogen therapy is that we don't have to worry about the uterus 
then the endometrium we don't need to give progesterone uh, 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 therapy in between for keeping the endometrium safe and it brings about the best possible uh, 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 what you call response in terms of vaginal health and of course along with this we need to also take care of other things like we need to take care of whatever infections is there uh, vaginal infections we can also give them uh, uh, the uh, the lactobacilli uh, uh, which uh, can be given in a long term course of almost uh, 2 months and that will again help in preventing recurrent infections uh, in terms of arousal there are uh, certain uh, other medications which are available uh, uh, should I go into that or is it, is it uh, part of the next question, the, the tablets for arousal and tablets for... Yes, you continue with uh, arousal tablets. Yeah, Whether yeah. You, Are you going to supplement uh, oral uh, medications also along with uh, local estrogen? Uh, yeah, oral uh, estrogen therapy tablet, I mean, in terms of oral estrogen therapy generally is not recommended. It's only the vaginal estrogen therapy which is necessary. I can add one point here that uh, you can also use moisturizers. Moisturizers are very good. Uh, they uh, Sometimes if the patient is a little bit hesitant to use uh, estrogen, you can just give them moisturizers. Moisturizers are different from lubricants. Lubricants is only for one time use, only for that particular sexual activity. Whereas moisturizers can be used on a daily basis. It is not only useful from for having uh, sexual relations, but also... It helps in improving the vaginal epithelium. In fact, long-term moisturizer use has seen to improve the vaginal epithelium, the pH, the vaginal pH, etc. And almost not maybe the same level of effect as estrogen, but yes, definitely a better effect. Uh, and uh, that definitely improves the vaginal health. So uh, amongst local applications, apart from estrogen therapies, you can also give them moisturizers. There are a couple of moisturizers available in the market today. So those can be prescribed. Uh, then, of course, then we come to the oral therapies. And among the oral therapies, as uh, it is pointed out here in this slide, uh, systemic HRT can help if they are not responding only to the vaginal uh, estrogens. So HRT in low dose can be given. Uh, yes, of course, they have to be in that window period. Uh, where you can start oral uh, HRT, uh, you know, they say that less than 60 years of age or within the first 10 years after menopause, that is the time when you can give them systemic HRT. And uh, Tibolon, that is something, it is a wonderful, wonderful drug. It has got uh, uh, estrogenic properties, progesterogenic properties, as well as androgenic action. And it is this androgenic action which helps in improving uh, uh, not only the uh, estrogen levels in the vagina, but also mainly it helps in improving the loss of libido. That is something which is none of the other uh, drugs help in do, uh, doing that. But Tibolon, because of their and androgenic properties, because Tibolon, once it is absorbed, it is metabolized into three three different uh, 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 categories. And it is the estrogen androgenic component, which helps in improving the loss of libido, which is a very, very important aspect at this time in a woman's life. So that uh, uh, is there and at the same time, it does not uh, uh, have, it is safe from the best point of view, it is safe from the endometrial point of view. Only thing is, uh, generally it is always said that don't give it in the very first year after menopause because sometimes the patient may have intermenstrual bleeding uh, while she's on Tibolon. So uh, definitely after one year, you can start using Tibolon. Apurva, next question. Yeah. Uh, uh, Dr. Deepa, what are the other treatments are available uh, for the sexual dysfunction in case of menopause? Can you just please elaborate? Yeah, uh, we can use testosterone, gels or uh, transdermal uh, patches, uh, um, uh, specifically, testosterone uh, is a androgenic uh, steroid, so it uh, enhances the uh, sexual desire and libido. Uh, and in men, of course, it uh, improves the performance, uh, everything, blood flow, everything. Uh, unfortunately, I think it's only the uh, male preparation that's also available for females. Um, there are no specific uh, drug, uh, female preparations available. But uh, they are very effective. Uh, we can use 1% gel or uh, 300 uh, microgram patches um, every day. 
the only thing is uh, they have to be counseled about some kind of uh, um, uh, virilizing effects some in some people especially they might uh, have uh, more uh, hair growth hirsutism uh, which is uh, again can get exacerbated uh, menopausal women actually have uh, a higher uh, more hair growth on the face uh, because uh, because of the tilt of uh, androgens uh, versus estrogen estrogen is low so they can ha have more hair growth uh, and um, voice deepening other virilization uh, virilizing effects like uh, voice deepening clitromegaly um, basically and also insulin resistance uh, is quite common and uh, most androgens are aromatized to estrogens so men also have to be counseled uh, th these effects on breast endometrium cardiovascular system everything will have to be counseled um, testosterone uh, cannot be uh, used on a long term basis they have to be used only on a short term basis so um, up to 3 from 3 to 12 months uh, anywhere uh, between 3 to 12 months seems to be safe and they have to be under constant supervision while while on this one uh, one point i would like to add here the among the gel which is available generally uh, like what dr deepa said it is the same preparation for males as well as females so generally for uh, females it is one press when you say one press it is generally 12 milligrams is uh, the dose and that is meant for females. And for males, generally we, we advise them three to four uh, presses of the uh, gel. That will make it almost uh, 48 milligrams or 50 milligram dosage for the males. But if you give that little bit higher dose in females, then it might uh, give rise to some of the other side effects. Very true. Uh, these menopausal women are usually suffer with some psychological problems also some mood disorders they have some emotional problems stress anxiety depression so dr shamima uh, do you think some other drugs are also available to help them out dr shamima you have to unmute yourself please ah, sorry so, sexual dysfunction is basically it's the uh, decrease in dopamine and increase in serotonin. So serotonin antagonists can always help, like flibanserin. They can help in uh, improving the sexual desire. And uh, But they can have severe hypotension and syncope if it is used. So it is advised to use at bedtime. And uh, we should not be, uh, we should be careful that they don't have any hepatic impairment and it's better not to use alcohol along with that because it can improve, increase the hypotension. So these are the things. The other thing is uh, another uh, serotonin partial agonist is buspiron. That can also be, it's an, it's an anxiolytic also. So it can be also used in, it's an off-label use they say, but it can be used in a dose of 5 milligram twice daily. Uh, uh, other drug, uh, okay. Yes. Uh, Dr. Vandana, nowadays there is charisma of newer modalities, vaginal aesthetics. What is your yes. opinion regarding this menopause? Vandana Bhuria. Yes, ma'am. Uh, regarding the vaginal other therapies apart from the drugs, uh, they are, you are asking about other therapies. Yeah, yeah. other than the pharmacy. All the drugs have been discussed. Apart yeah, from the not drug discussed. Therapy, what, huh? Apart from the drug therapy, there are uh, laser is available, PRP is uh, uh, available for the G-spot and the O-spot augmentation. And then we can uh, have, these are the non-surgical ones. And stem cell therapy and fillers are also available. Uh, and then, uh, all these therapies, they are uh, definitely, they can be offered to the patient. But explaining the success rate uh, is variable. Among different patients, it's uh, it may not be successful at all, or it may be 50 to 60% success rates are, can be achieved. So uh, appropriate counseling of the women should be done prior to the therapy. And these are the non-surgical ones. Then surgical uh, treatment is also available uh, for, you know, we can do the wedge resection, we can do the corpoperineurapy uh, to improve the so that vaginal tightening can be there. And if the patient has prolapse, then we can do uh, hysterectomy with the pelvic floor repair, which includes the entire corpoperineurapy and the corpoperineurapy board. So we can offer uh, according to the patient. 
different therapies, whether surgical or the non-surgical ones. These are the only ones now. Yeah. Apurva, your question? Uh, yeah. Uh, so the other, just uh, to brief all these things, um, the three things which actually I am using, just uh, give a knowledge, which is freely available, is the testosterone, what is uh, wonderfully told. Uh, second is the DHEA. Yes, the same DHEA which we are using for, you know, low AMS. Actually, the uh, especially in case of female interest arousal disorder, what happened, the actual dose is 100 milligram per day. But in our, uh, the it is not available, it's up to 75 milligram available in the market. So I am using it 75 milligram per day and it has a wonderful effect in a uh, perimenopausal as well as menopausal ladies having the sexual interest and arousal disorder. Uh, now the second thing uh, uh, which is available uh, is the sidenafil citrate. So Nagarkati sir, uh, can you just please elaborate uh, uh, what uh, about the sildenafil in case of females? Uh, yeah, sildenafil citrate, we all know, basically acts as a vasodilator and improving the blood flow. And uh, it was basically, started, well, the, it became famous mainly for male for males for erectile dysfunction. But it acts in the same principle in women by uh, improving the blood flow in the vagina and thereby uh, it uh, enhances sexual arousal Amongst the women also, it's in fact one of the drugs for female sexual dysfunction uh, and for uh, uh, improving the vaginal uh, health. So it's generally given just like, as I said, for testosterone, it's given in a much lesser dose. So in female, it is generally given as 25 milligram, uh, available as 25 milligram tablets can be given as once or twice a day. And uh, 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 of course, for men, we use 50 to 100 milligrams, but for females, it is generally 25 milligram once or twice a day. Uh, uh, yes, as it says here, they, it increases the blood uh, supply in the female genitals and thereby producing better arousal sensation and lubrication in the genital area. Uh, uh, you were mentioning about DHEA. So DHEA actually is also available uh, abroad as a local application. Local application. It's available yes. as the name Prasteron. So in fact, that yes. works even better. It is available online for our patients if they want to because uh, uh, that works even better than uh, uh, the oral. oral. So uh, that is there. And of course, uh, uh, sildenafil has various other uses, but this is one of the very, very, uh, very important uh, use in terms of female sexual dysfunction. Dr. Preeti, uh, do you think is there any role of nutraceuticals like L-arginine, Jinkoba? Etc. Etc. Dr. Preeti Niranjan. Uh, ma'am, you have to unmute yourself, Preeti, ma'am. Uh, uh, ma'am, please unmute yourself. Yeah. Dr. Preeti, you have to unmute yourself. No? Okay, then Dr. Deepa, you can take this question then. Basically, it acts in the same way. It is a nitrous yes. donor. It's a nitrous oxide can... donor. Yeah, okay, okay. Huh. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yes, we can very well use allergenin and other also, but at the same time, they may work as a to re reduce the fatigue of the patient, especially of the woman. And I feel that we should always give it and we should take the detailed history, how much work she does, whether she takes proper amount of the milk, other multivitamins or not. And a short term duration of the allergenin and zincobit, all these can be given to the patient. These uh, compounds they act as a nitric oxide donor. Yeah. So yes. This yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that way they cause vasodilatation and it's thereby again the same way as the arousal brings about improvement in the blood flow in the vagina and then, uh, sexual arousal. Some yes. of which are also At useful least. is yes, uh, your SCRMs, the selective estrogen receptor modulators. 
and uh, there again uh, there is one drug ospamifin which is uh, again very uh, useful uh, as an scrm in terms of improving uh, uh, libido as well as uh, improving vaginal health yes sums is uh, they are also used yeah yes. sums and the tsec complex again that is not available in india it but, is not uh, mm -hmm. the, com the combination of a uh, scrm along with dose conjugated estrogen estrogen yes mm -hmm. always advise uh, proper diet you know high protein diet to our patients uh, very important yes studies have been conducted in the literature uh, which have uh, the, the researchers have given the same seeds and they have uh, you know investigated the symptoms the sexual arousal that has been improved over a definitely 6 to 8 week period uh, the patient has consumed and other features of menopause they are also relieved so dietary uh, modification uh, yeah. especially the same seeds and high protein diet yeah, uh, high, high protein diet protein. and it is said that uh, you should have all colors in your plate yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. I think what Dr. Preeti has Preeti ma'am has been stressing about fatigue. So that is where mm -hmm. the protein powders will help. It will yes. remove that fatigue aspect and uh, it automatically brings about a well-being in both mind and body. So because in my history I concluded women always complains of the fatigue in the menopausal age. Uh, they should always be advised about you know uh, meditation. Uh, they should uh, meditation always help in, in removing the fatigue. Meditation as well as yoga that uh, removes the fatigue of all the perimenopausal and the menopausal females. Yes. And protein supplements are important for sarcopenia also uh, yeah. for maintaining the muscle mass. Ah. I think that that goes a long way in uh, helping fatigue as well as uh, general activity and preventing falls and everything. To be active is very, very important in the same group. Yes. Yeah, and diet to be active, stay active. Also. We have to take care of osteoporosis, osteopenia, through diet, through exercise, vitamin D. All these lifestyle modifications, they all play in role for quality of life. And uh, phytoestrogens Absolutely. are there always. Uh, soya isoflavones. Mm -hmm. uh, Soy products. Locally, local agents with uh, isoflavones that really helps in many many cases, where especially the local estrogens are contraindicated in such cases. They the uh, patients report uh, very good results with the uh, isoflavone gels. It's available as like Israel, Israel Israel gel is yes. yeah. and even the hyaluronidase Israel. gel, which. Uh, the same companies marketing, they are also like very good in improving the pelvic uh, dysperonia and yeah. yeah. Yes. Thank you so much. In the so last, I now think, you conclude. Uh, Ma'am, before we conclude, yeah, before we conclude, we just want, uh, um, you know, a single note from each and everyone. Starting from Nagarkati sir, Rajan sir, the message you want to give to the audience when they are dealing with uh, menopause with the sexual dysfunction. Yeah. I think uh, the important, uh, the tagline that uh, uh, it's a new life beginning uh, at men midlife and uh, therefore Shaijas always keeps uh, saying that. Uh, so you need to make it more active and uh, therefore you have to cover all these aspects, not just sexual part, but of course the other things and make life meaningful in this particular phase of life. Absolutely. Uh, Preeti, ma'am? Yes, uh, we should have a very good listening ear and we should tell patient in very single one or two lines. They should learn to enjoy the life with whatever is available with them. Yeah, uh, absolutely, ma'am. Deepa, ma'am? Uh, whenever patients come with, uh, we have to actually proactively uh, elicit history from all patients in the perimenopausal period because they don't come uh, they don't come forward uh, discussing this uh, subject because it is taboo. And wherever possible, we have to counsel them as a couple because uh, the husbands uh, will be in a different um, the same wavelength and uh, wives can be in a different wavelength. So they have to be counseled as a couple. And... Um, uh, we they have to actually uh, find out what is best for them. Each couple is different. 
so they have to explore and uh, take time off to find out what is best for themselves absolutely absolutely uh, vandana ma'am apurv i like i will like to add one thing our management yes, should be always cost effective yes. so we should consider their financial status also we should know about absolutely. details about absolutely. it absolutely absolutely yeah vandana ma'am uh, i think women should be told that uh, everything is in their mind if they consider themselves to be young then they are young and uh, they should uh, share everything with their partner uh, so that uh, uh, any problem like this perineum or the medical disorders or the psychological disorders they can be dealt on time and even they can be prevented even at 40 or 45 the things you know prevention is always better than cure so the things should be dealt early absolutely ma'am uh, rakshami ma'am Yeah. Yes, I want to say that this is not midlife. It's a it's a new new life beginning at the mid uh, beginning at this age. And so, the thing is, they should be made available. They should be made aware that these options are available, and they can talk freely to their doctor about these problems. So then only they can come out. Because just uh, telling one uh, lady alone will not be. sufficient maybe uh, the 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 other the couple as a couple the male partner thinks differently means then it is going to be difficult so both of them should be made aware that these problems can happen and there are solutions for these problems and they can make their life more enjoyable uh, by uh, i mean taking such uh, advices so that should be my uh, this thing and one thing i would like to add uh you know yeah, uh, to the doctors actually the doctors or the gynecologists attending such patients should not be judgmental about their mm. patient you know somehow uh, in my opd is i see some yesterday only a patient was 71 years and uh, she said that uh, she had this pregnancy so my post casual students were like why she is having intercourse at this age so <laughs> i took the patient alone in another room and then i counseled her and then i counseled my post graduate student even he you should not be judgmental so it is as a lesson for doctors actually because doctors themselves they are shy to discuss all the problems all the sexual problems with their with the women so women are also shy to share their problems with the doctor so the, we should not be judgmental actually i like to add one more uh, these days uh, divorce is so common and remarriages are so common in this age group mm. so it's very important to maintain their sexual life and physical fitness and everything um uh, you know like people are uh, it, divorce is so common so divorce and remarriages so it it's all the more getting more and more importance in our uh, uh, in our practice apura i would like to add one point yeah definitely sir <laughs> we we just don't have to focus on the dysfunction because we uh, we as a uh, clinician have to make that their sex life better not we uh, just find out if it is anything abnormal but what is normal we have to enhance that uh, and i think sizes will be going to deliver that how to improve their sex life so next lecture is on about that only yeah uh, so i think uh, ruma ma'am Uh, we should wind up uh, and uh, before that uh, my respected seniors and dear friends uh, please bless me uh, for the post of chairperson sexual health and society committee foxy and uh, it can't be possible without your blessings without your vote without your support voting is already started it will be up to 25th august 5 pm so please 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 sure. vote me thank you sir. all the best uh, apurva and thank i thank, thank all you. my panelists and the audience for this interesting and interactive session thank you sir very, very, very well made uh, panel you. i would say uh, dr ruma and dr apurva very comprehensive and covering all aspects our panelists thank were great thank you thank yeah, you definitely, <laughs> definitely, definitely. so sir, very informative panel thanks so much thank you Uh, thank so you uh, moderator once again dr neeraj dr shaijas and dr thank you sir shaijas are you there please uh, show your yeah yeah yes uh, i am here i am here i'm very much here i was just listening to the panel thank you <laughs> he is he is going to add more life to midlife
Yes. <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, moderators and uh, esteemed panelists, for this such crisp and uh, great, uh, indeed a great panel discussion. Uh, so now we move on to our uh, talks. I invite chairpersons, Dr. Narendra Malhotra. Sir is Managing Director, Rainbow Hospitals, past president of Foxy and past president of ISAR. Dr. Vijay Lakshmi Sheshadri, Madam is Senior Consultant, Sundaram Medical Foundation, Chennai, member Foxy Practical Obstetrics Committee. And Dr. Meeta Gupta, she is Professor and Head Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Ames, Jammu. Uh, Dilpit, I, I think Malhotra sir is not there. Maruta sir, are you there? Uh, no, I think he is not there. Yeah. Uh, so may I request Dr. Vijay Lakshmi, ma'am, to introduce our speaker? Yes, yes. yes. Uh, thank you, Neeraj. Uh, thank you, Shaijas, for this wonderful opportunity. Uh, I think uh, it's my privilege to introduce... Uh, a very young but very bright, talented Shaijas, whom I know for several years now. And um, Shaijas, uh, please put on the slide, though I can talk talk about him, but still, uh, is there a slide or I can just say like that? Okay. Uh, a very active member and uh, very, 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 uh, I would say, not only uh, for the academics, but also for the non-academic programs. Uh, I think he's a very bright, and, um, uh, you know, he organizes so well and compares it very well. Recently, we saw that in uh, Kodai um, Kornal also. So, Shaijas, but uh, this is a topic which is, uh, I know, very close to the menopausal society as well as to the sexual committee. And uh, definitely, we all know Spark at 40 does it really ignite at 40 so that you have to rekindle it at 40 or does it stay on? And that is the point I think you have to talk about and you are going to do a wonderful job. So I welcome Shaijas for this uh, very, very lucrative talk. I think it will add lots of, uh, it will throw lots of light on how men and women can still continue to be active in every way beyond 42, not considering 40 as a line drawn for all their uh, pleasures or happiness or the meanings of life. So over to you, Shaijas, and I think Narendra Malhotra may join after this and he may add on to the comments. Uh, over to you, Shaijas, and thank you, Sexual Committee, for this wonderful opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can I share my slides? Okay, uh, I, I hope my slides are visible and uh, I'm audible. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, first of all, uh, as I already mentioned in the early part when I was given an opportunity to talk, thank you so much, Neeraj, for this wonderful, wonderful opportunity. It's a privilege on, on the side of Midlife Management Committee to have this collaboration. Uh, thank you, Binal, for collaborating with us. Uh, uh, Binal is heading the uh, Public Awareness Committee of uh, IMS. And I bring greetings from uh, Foxy team, uh, Dr. Rishigesh Pai, Dr. Madhuri Patel, and my vice president in charge, uh, Dr. Yeshwadra Pradeep. I also bring greetings from the Kerala Federation, of which I'm the joint secretary of, and the Kanano Rohingya Society, a society of almost 130 plus members doing a lot of good work, not just on the academic front, but more importantly, I would say on the social front, which is so, so very important uh, uh, as far as we gynecologists are concerned. Now, sex after 40, how to keep the spark alive. Uh, I thought rather than keeping it very bland, uh, because it's a sexual medicine committee, I will hit right at the point or maybe I'll hit right at the G spot. So it's about sex at 40, uh, after 40, and how to keep the spark alive. Now, thankfully, uh, we are talking about it more. This issue is no more the elephant in the room. 
which we all know exist because it's it's so big, but we never talked about it. But I'm I'm sure with all the activities that these kind of committees are doing, with a lot of public awareness that is being spread on these topics, as well as the the amount of awareness that is that is reaching out to the practicing gynecologists and the clinicians, I hope and pray that it's no more the elephant in the room. We talk more about it, and then then we get to know. You know why I love uh, being a part of Neeraj Jadav's program? Because this is the only webinar where you can talk adult content. Okay, it's it's an uncensored version of the talk. And uh, Neeraj told me very clearly that you can uh, you can uh, be totally un uncensored. And he very very specifically, uh, I I hope he I meant that he didn't want me to get stuck between the video. thighs. Because that discussion is already I over. The videos. <laughs> Sir? <laughs> so, he told me to talk less like a gynecologist because already there's been talk of about vaginal estrogens and how much we can improve the vagina. So, he told me not to get, not to get stuck between the legs, uh, uh, get out of it and then talk a little bit more on the wider perspective. On that note, thank you so much, Narendra sir, for joining in. It's always a pleasure. Uh, and thank you so much, Vijay Lakshmi madam, uh, for, for being here with us. Now, uh, where does the real issue lie? Uh, we understand uh, that uh, a decline in the quantity and frequency of a woman's sexual activity as they approach midlife is, is nearly a matter of fact. Then we also understand that uh, past research told us that it is all attributed to biology, specifically menopause. So we were always talking about a uh, uh, urogenital atrophy and atrophic vagina uh, affecting a woman's sexual activity. I think gynecologists have always been tagged to be those kind of people who find out who will find out some trouble where the other people find pleasure. And this is where I think we, we got really tagged in. And I think we need to come out of that. So... Is this relation to menopause and reduction in sexual activity, quantity, quality, and all that? Is it something that we have been conditioned to believe? I think we need to look at that. Now, we conventionally thought that sex happens between the two legs. But with a lot of evidence that is coming up, we understand today that it happens between the two years. So sex is what you're thinking. And that's why we are able to fantasize and create a much more sensual atmosphere, maybe many a times much more better than the actual physical act of sex. Fine. Now, what are women across the world telling us about their sexual activity? Let's look at that. Some extremely wonderful articles published in the Journal of Sex Research uh, where middle-aged women were asked. Many of them experienced significant dissatisfaction pertaining to their sexual life. They interviewed more than 2,000 women between age 40 and 59. One third of them haven't had any sex over the last one month before this, this survey was undertaken. Among those who did engage in sexual activity, almost half of them were dissatisfied. Now, if you delve deeper into it, researchers found that the age and menopausal status has less to do. And we understand that today. And that is why we need to not to get stuck between the two legs and think a little bit more about what is between the years of these women who are actually struggling. Now, that's a typical woman in midlife. Now, if you are a woman, you don't have to look at that picture. You just have to look at the mirror. She's doing multiple things. She's doing a lot of difficult balancing act. A typical midlife woman is expected to fulfill almost five to eight roles in life at the same time. And many times we fail to appreciate that. She's a mother, she's a daughter, a daughter-in-law, a wife, a teacher, a finance manager, and a major head of the household. Now, she needs to balance all these things. And we typically call it by the name a sandwich generation. Because she's getting sandwiched by two generations on either side. One is her children, who probably would have grown up and some of them would have become teens. So you will have to deal with all the teenage problems on one side. On the other side, you have your aging parents or in-laws and you need to deal with their health problems and other attitude related problems. And there's too much of generation gap here. So teenage tantrums and the problems of growing up children on one side and the problems of aging parents or in-laws on the other side, and you're totally getting sandwiched. 
and when there is so much happening in your life so many roles to fulfill such a difficult balancing act to do do you really think would sex be on top of the priority list for her most likely no okay fine so where lies the real problem the woman who were interviewed by these researchers complained about a multitude of factors aside from the care giving process which was just draining them out they had to manage a career they had to look for those unexisting or non existing balance between work and family life which is really not there uh, in reality they also had the pressure to have a social life and often there was no escape from these and women unfortunately get forced to perform all these responsibilities without much practical or emotional support to help them cope and thus sex becomes lower and lower in the priority list or it might actually totally disappear now let's talk about this entity i'm not sure how many of you are aware of this but there is a very interesting entity called the orgasm gap orgasm gap is otherwise known as disparity in orgasms it basically states that it's a scientific data that those women who are experiencing fewer orgasms gets accustomed to expecting fewer orgasms i repeat those women who are experiencing fewer orgasms gets accustomed to a state of expecting fewer orgasms and this is so so very important and it thus leads to because she is not expecting anything out of this act many times it is just a penetration for 10 to 15 times and when the male is done it's over it leads to more number of unsatisfied sexual acts and when most of her uh, even less frequent sexual acts are, are ending up in an unsatisfied manner she very naturally tends to give up on that with other priorities taking up her mental space sex unfortunately gets reduced to a core rather than an activity to derive pleasure from the other big problem is poor self image that also may be a very important contributing factor research has shown that an overwhelming majority of middle aged women aren't really really happy with the way they actually look worried about the wrinkles on their skin the way their faces and especially their midriff that obesity is a big big problem at that age now they all had a significant dip in the self esteem and that significantly affected her urge to have sex and many a times people had that withdrawal kind of response and they got away you need to emphasize on this body related issue because they are so very important because it just doesn't affect the body it affects the mind also now you understand that the beauty norms that are set by the society if you look at the a typical heroine in a bollywood movie you'll understand what are those beauty norms we talk about size zero we talk about women uh, delivering uh, and then coming back and doing a movie uh, and and they reach a pre pregnancy weight in no matter of time you wonder how they make that happen so those are the beauty norms that are set by the society that are unrealistic even for young women so as one ages no the standards become even more challenging to keep up with so you probably can't expect a midlife uh, woman to easily become size zero and do it uh, because you have women from various walks of life and the other added thing is if you are in middle age and if you are ultimate if you have ended up searching something on your google there are so many suggestions that come in if you are a midlife woman and that will be from the social media telling you how to fight every wrinkle how to totally zap the body fat and how to defy aging and that is what the social media is actually conditioning us to believe and that leads to significant body image issues in midlife women what are the mental health issues now an average midlife woman was asked how is your headache and she instantaneously told he has gone to office now that is the kind of equation that people end up with with the partner and if you happen to be a dependent partner who will only brush your teeth if your wife would provide you with a toothbrush with a toothpaste placed on it you will prefer not to take a shower if the towel is not provided to you many partners are that dependent that dependency becomes an over dependency as you reach midlife and then there is so much of marital disharmony and all that when people don't do it for each other uh, on a happy note there are a lot of divorces happening too many second marriages adjusting to a new partner becomes even more difficult in midlife so all those things put together now on the other uh, other equation that changes is the problem with children you have when you are the, when you are when they are with you then you have their teenage problems and all that to deal with and when they leave you then you suffer from emptiness syndrome 
So that's a whole uh, lot of mental health problems for that midlife woman. Aging parents and in-laws on the other side. With the career, they are unable to climb up the ladder, which their male counterparts are so easily doing. And these women are totally stuck between work life and personal life, unable to balance it. And unfortunately, to add fuel to the fire, if you are in your 40s, you would be at the peak of your career, having a whole lot of managerial roles. And there is a lot of leftover work that she brings home. And that adds on to the real problem. Now coming to the, the, the last half of the lecture, we are talking about how to actually reignite the spark. Just look at this picture. This is a teenage sexual act. You understand that there is a lot of excitement if you have experienced it yourself. Otherwise, if you have heard those stories, you would have admired your friend who had that episode of uh, teenage sex. Okay, You understand that there was a lot of curiosity, uh, a, a, a lot of things. A lot of things which made it really, really exciting. Okay, we were, we were, uh, we we did not analyze things as as objectively as we do today. So teenage was a wonderful time. Unfortunately, the same person when they reach midlife, all this spark, unfortunately, dies down. And why does it happen? It primarily happens because your curiosity and your thought to learn something new and your expectations are coming down. That means the curiosity to know each other's body was the driving force for a teenage sex. Now you're so accustomed to each other's body, so you don't have anything to curiously explore. Learning, you don't want, you, you get a feeling that you know everything about sex, so you don't want to learn anything new. You don't want to experience anything new. And then comes expectations. What I was talking about, the orgasm gap. If you're actually getting lesser orgasms, you will get accustomed to a state where you're not expecting any orgasms. And when you are, when you, when your mind is conditioned to believe that it is going to be an unsatisfied sexual act, then you decide not to get into it. So reigniting will have to bring in all these three points, which you yourself had in your teen or when you were young, you bring it back. Remember that sex in twenties was totally out of curiosity. People just wanted to see how it is working. And the same applies to both the boy and the girl. Sex in 30s was a baby manufacturing process. Okay. And we infertility specialists started timing the coitus and we made it really difficult. No, People used to write down uh, sex at 6 p.m. on 25th, 7 a.m. on 26th and made it even more difficult for them. But sex in 40s doesn't really have to be these two. There's no burden of baby making here. So it has to be for pleasure. And you understand this point and the spark can automatically get reignited. Creating time for each other is so, so very important. Now, building activities around your spouse would help to reignite the love spark. Couples need to engage in activities activities with their spouse, for example, spending time watching movies together, be it uh, watching a romantic uh, movie in a theater, or nowadays it's OTT days, so you can do that at home itself. There are couple groups which actually openly talk about sex and related stuff, so you can join one of those couple groups, engage in some couple activities, going for a date still has to be a part of your habit. Fine. Exercise really helps, okay? On a scientific note, exercise helps to enhance the blood circulation to the genital organs. And that's why, especially for men and women, for women who are suffering from dryness and men who are suffering from low libido, as well as women who are suffering from lower libido, a better blood flow would mean a better erection for a man and a better lubrication for a woman. And that definitely, definitely helps. Now, women are always concerned about a loose vagina and they can work on that. Okay, there's a lot of cosmetic gynecology stuff that is happening these days. Narendra sir himself is an expert on that and we are glad that he is here today. Now, one advice that you can tell everybody is to probably take care of some Kegels exercises which can help to work on the pelvic floor muscles and that a little bit more tighter vagina has been shown to even improve the orgasms in women. And actually, her partner also tends to like that a little bit more. So work on that. Very, very important. Now, a very, very controversial area where all of you might have difference of opinion because you might be thinking else. Now, are you, are you allowing your partner to fantasize? Or are, are you looking at an act of achieving self-pleasure which is done by your partner 
uh, in a in a relatively open minded manner very important there were some initial researches which told that people who are uh, obsessed or people who are too much into self pleasure activities yes i am talking about that act of masturbation people thought that it takes away all the fun all the excitement from an actual sexual act so people who are involved in self pleasure activities have less pleasureful sex but i think the evidence is changing and there is lot lot more evidence that is gathering these days to tell you something else so the best way to reignite the spark would be you can definitely allow your partner to fantasize and try having a conversation and try to understand about his or her fantasies if you are a female try to understand what is your man fantasizing about what is that kind of lingerie that he is dreaming of what is that kind of sexual act that he is fantasizing about which gives him excitement and better erection and the same thing applies vice versa if you are a man you need to talk to that woman also what is that kind of man he is looking at what is that kind of body that he is looking at and 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 try your best to emulate that it might actually be a very very easy recipe to reignite the spark so think on this point uh, allowing your partner to fantasize doesn't actually take away the fun and the excitement of an actual sexual act it might actually help to reignite provided you are communicating with your partner well that the the final tagline is so very important i would say condition supply how to reignite the spark exploring new styles of having sex it is not just about those variety of positions that you actually see in that schematic picture there remember that sex should not be limited to penetration there are other forms of sex which are equally therapeutic have you heard of this word called word called outer course it's exactly opposite of intercourse and what does it include it includes fondling cuddling and oral sex we called it foreplay once upon a time but we want to redefine it because even outer course can give orgasms to a man and a woman fine specifically the woman because that intimacy and care and fondling is what they actually are looking for much more than an act of penetration so remember this word called outer course communicate regularly even during the act unfortunately what has been found is as you get older and older you hardly talk before during or after sex it just becomes a mechanical act 5 to 10 penetrations and the man is done and he walks away and goes and sleeps on another bed that's a real problem there so communicating before during and after an act creates a very very special connection and bonding and that's so very important for a sexual act also discuss with your partner what are you getting from that sexual act the way he is doing it for you or she is doing it for you and what you are in getting from that sexual act now if you if you talk to that you can tell him what you want what what is that extra step or that style that actually can make sex better now exploring new styles of having sex could also include changing the routine place of a sexual act there are people who find who who were reigniting the spark has happened whenever they attempted a quickie in the probably in the washroom or the kitchen or the sofa in their living room if if privacy can be ensured so look at ways to actually open up a little bit more from your conventional styles and that can seriously help to reignite the spark so avoiding familiarity is so very important because that definitely creeps in after years of marriage you tend to get used to the looks of your of your partner this is the way she dresses up or this is the way he dresses up this is that hairstyle so even a change in hairstyle a dress sense a new set of lingerie undergarments night dresses everything can work actually to reignite the spark and if you can totally talk about the fantasy that your partner has and get more specific to that and try to emulate that does wonders so looking good and sexy for your spouse is okay right yes get a caregiver for your kids i think sometimes you get too obsessed with your kids right but i always say this your kids are an investment for you 
which would probably last for 16 to 18 years. And your spouse is an investment for a lifetime. So if you actually have to prioritize and choose between your partner versus your children, ideally has to be a partner if you are looking for, yes, a lifetime investment, which is going to make your life much more comfortable and much more happier and maybe more sexier too. Self-pleasure and sex toys. We always looked at it being used by women who has too much of libido, isn't it? They used to get unduly tagged that way. But we understand that things are things are very, very different today. Because we understand that self-pleasure with sex toys can actually help a midlife woman to understand her body a little. What happened? We lost him. His connection got cut. Yeah. Connection. Mm, waiting for two minutes. Otherwise, we will move on to... Binal, what happened to you? Uh, your patient delivered or not? <laughs> yeah. By mail, I have sent the PPT because I am in the oh. labor room right now. So, but I can... We can discuss with Sandhu. Uh, Sandhu. Meanwhile, we can just have a, a notes from the chairpersons. Yes. Including remarks from the chairperson. Uh, Dr. Venus, I haven't received the mail yet. I'm waiting. Palvatra, sir, your thoughts and your inputs. So, very good evening to all of you. Indeed, a very, very uh, fantastic, nice webinar. And uh, the panel, unfortunately, I had to leave for 20 minutes to be uh, on the other Foxy webinar for a talk. So, but I was listening on my phone. So uh, this is a topic which we need to reignite and re-spark. Or aag lagao, tabhi kaam banega. So, or jaise ki when we just went to Kodai Canal, na, this fellow was asking how cold it is. I said the sexual medicine committee is coming, so it cannot be cold. So you can uh, you can warm up the things whenever you want. So, uh, the jokes apart, there are lots of jokes going to be uh, on, on such topics. But uh, Shaijas has very, very beautifully brought out that you have to do something new and do something new every day. For doing something new every day or every week or every month at least, you have to have that spark inside you. So, once you have, see why some people do everything and some people do nothing. So that, uh, and they are very, so we should be satisfied with life, uh, with what we do with work. And we have to have a balanced life. And that is very, very important to balance your work. Now, people are working. They wake up at, I heard of an IVF specialist. I wake up at 4.30. I do pickups from 4.30 to 9.30. Then I do embryology till 11.30. And straight away, I go into the OPD. I, I don't have breakfast. By 1 or 2 o'clock, maybe a little snack. And I get free at 6.00. And then I go to sleep. So, abhi kidar spa, kidar sex, nothing, nothing will be for them. So, and uh, today's, uh, you see today's um, uh, younger generation, they have, the, the laptop is in the bedroom. And they work, well, that work in home, instead of making them more sexually active, has actually made them drift apart. Because they are there together. They are probably lying in the same bed, but they are working on their laptops. And uh, it's uh, it's it's a real tragedy that we ignore ourselves and we bring work into the bedrooms. So my this thing is that live life happily. See, you need money only to a certain extent. After that, it is extra. And why do, why do you need something extra? Have enjoy. So go for holidays. Go for regular tea. Treat your wife like your girlfriend forever. See, we had. We had an affair in 1977 and we are still having an affair. So that is, then then you will be happy. So I, I'm always smiling because I'm very happy. So treat, treat them like that and the wife should treat the husband like a king. So, so that, that balance has to be there. And of course, work together. So if we are always arguing, always fighting, Yes, fighting is unnecessary. 
but then fight kiss and make up that's what it is so thank you neeraj for bringing this topic uh, publicly and i thank all of you for inviting me here to give some of your views this is a huge topic we can go on and on discussing it with the, without an end and i think we are going to do it in fun friends again deepa is going to be our main speaker there <laughs> thank you thank you sir um vita madam why me of all people sir you yeah, know because you said you want to dance vita <laughs> <laughs> madam your input Thank you, Neeraj sir, for inviting me. And uh, Dr. Shaijus has really done justice to the topic, and you know he has reignited all the speakers and the chairpersons and the delegates in talking about this. And I think so that is a very good start because we all are talking. And what uh, Narendra sir has given us is the gem or the diamond of the entire that we should treat our partners as a girlfriend or as a king, whoever be the partner. So I think so. beautifully sir we have also been educated even though we were chairperson but i think so we also have taken a good message back home thank you so much sir thank you thank you thank you madam dilpreet yeah <laughs> thank you sir thank uh, thanks dr shaijas for such a wonderful talk and thanks dr narendra sir it's always pleasure seeing you and your girlfriend ma'am together we met last week only in coskain if you remember in chandigarh so it's always so nice to see you together uh, next time i'm not so, letting you show that video i'll send you my video okay right you right we'll wait you for that you cannot show videos of other people who you don't know <laughs> yes and and we'll make we did uh, this video we did this video for foxy girish mane has it aajkal tere mere pyar ke charche har jo baat par and i'll send you that neeraj next time se wo dikhaoge Okay, sure, <laughs> definitely, and we'll de we'll make sure our spouses are sitting next to us in the webinar when you. That's are very there. important. That's very important. Whenever we have a talk like this, we said your spouses have to come. Yeah, your spouses have to be there. Otherwise, otherwise, no use. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks uh, to the speaker, Dr. Shaijas, and chairpersons for the wonderful inputs. now we move on to our next talk and uh, i would like to invite the chairpersons for that talk dr jignesh shah past president ims sir is i think uh, see sir is a senior secretary so see as he has left yeah next is dr sonia malik very senior consultant and ivf specialist i would rather say pioneer of the ivf and uh, dr rn devkota president siliguri obs gaini society member of sexual medicine committee foxy Uh, sir is also not yeah. able to yeah, join sir is also not well yeah uh, so i request dr sonia malik ma'am to kindly introduce the speaker thank you so much first of all congratulations and like narendra said to get this subject out of the shrouds is is absolutely wonderful uh, an amazing job that has been done sajas was extremely good but i'll go a bit beyond what he said as far as you know the the part that he can he was talking and maybe he would talk about it later but he was cut off there are some things which are beyond there is something called love at first touch first sight and that also means that there is some kind of an arousal when a person sees another person number one the second thing is the smell the pheromones which keep on getting emitted you know all the life throughout the life of a woman and throughout the life of a man a man is more capable more capable of smelling the pheromones of the woman always the the women are a little you know standoffish they may not be able to do it that well but then yes the women are also there to look at their partners and see whether they are really really what they want so therefore sex is much beyond sexuality sexuality is very subtle in the past when oh he's come back again he's come back yeah, to join really. again Maybe okay later on let me right. yeah. so then yeah. let me just quickly finish it off and uh, pass it on to binal now binal i have known beyond foxy and groups other than foxy binal has been close to me in the indian menopause society she is a new entrant there but i've seen her dancing her way through ever since you know many many years i was also i have also been the past president of the indian menopause society and like i wrote to her just a couple of days ago binal you have brought color into the indian menopause society she has brought life into it she is a wonderful absolutely great girl who who actually is a is i would say isne is cheez ko sarthak kiya hai ye jo 
ये जिस टॉपिक को हम आज डिस्कस कर रहे हैं शी हैज एक्चुअली ब्रॉट इट टू लाइफ बिकॉज शी हैज हॉबीज बियॉन्ड वॉट यू सी ओवर हियर समटाइम्स यू सी हर डूइंग अयाकिंग समटाइम्स शी इज आउट इन अ पिकनिक समटाइम्स शी इज सिंगिंग सो दिस गर्ल इज अमेजिंग and more than that as i have been told she is the she has been the past president of the baroda of sangaini society and she has also been the past president of the ims baroda so with that and presently the chairperson of the public awareness committee of ims i know that and she is doing a great job over there so we i give this mic now to now to binal to tell us more about hypoactive sexual desire syndrome something that is actually hitting most of the generation of today let us talk about it a little more in detail from her so i just your turn is going to come back later as dr neeraj says <laughs> sure 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 sorry for that uh, some network issues and uh, i don't yeah. know how it happened yes, yes. so thank you so much uh, sonia ma'am and i'm really overwhelmed with your comments and uh, thank you so so much neeraj for having me here and it's real privilege sonia ma'am to you have you as a chairperson for my session and uh, sorry for the quality of the camera basically i am uh, just adjusting to my labor room and as we busy obstetricians have like i have a patient in labor and so i cannot be at home at present yeah so uh, can we have uh, can i request uh, sindhu please to share my slides make it full screen yeah yeah the uh, sindhu is doing it ma'am yes thank yeah. you sindhu yeah so dear friends today we are here together to discuss desire disorders and yes as ma'am very well said that you know penetrative sex is probably the terminal stage of the entire thing first thing the i mean the mind is the biggest sex organ and first thing which happens is the desire right this is what i mean it's it, that is where it all begins and for female sexual dysfunction when we say as kaplan has already told us that there are various stages of this uh, sexual uh, sexuality that is desire arousal orgasm and the problems which are attached are the disorders of disorder arousal orgasm and pain and again pain is a very very relevant factor especially in menopausal females as we already discussed in the panels the physiology with the changes which happen in the vagina leading to pain right can i have the next slide please as we can divide these disorders today's main topic is the most commonest that is the hypoactive sexual desire disorder next slide please and why is this you know i mean uh, the hypoactive sexual desire disorder and the aversion disorder these are the two main problems and the three components of desire disorder are that this is a biological thing the drive decreases there is no motivation so that is psychological you know often the females for females reproduction is the only aspect to the sexuality and the social wish you know i mean the desire for the sex so all these three things are the components of desire and it is produced by a neuroendocrine mechanism where persistently or recurrently deficient fantasies or desire for sexual activity is called hypoactive desire disorder and this is mainly happens it causes lot of distress because interpersonal relationship and you know that understanding that harmony gets disrupted and as was discussed before that because of the increase or advances in the medicines the male counterpart is often taken care of about the erectile dysfunction so when the there is no synchrony between the male and the female between the in the desire often there is a disharmony between the interpersonal relationship and this function is not better accounted for by any other access disorder except for the sexual dysfunction next slide please now in the sexual aversion disorder there is a persistent or recurrent extreme aversion or like the female would like to just avoid any genital or sexual contact and this disturbances causes marked distress and it is not better accounted by any other disorder next slide please but you know frankly there is often an overlap it is difficult to you know fit a patient into one particular thing and often it is like a spectrum now what we are talking about today is the hypoactive sexual desire disorder which is most prevalent uh, sexual health problem and again the least discussed you know i mean as uh, we said in the beginning that sexuality is always a taboo topic and often the female especially in context to in the indian scenario in this society where you know it is 
uh, given the color i mean as if a non decent thing to be talked about often the female patients are not able to come out with their problems and we have to be proactive as being female health providers we have to be proactive and kind of we have to probe in these questions that you know if you have these problems you know what is the problem exactly which you are facing whether there is lack of motivation and there is uh, there is no spontaneous desire because often you know uh, if the female is sensitive enough then such erotic cues or stimulation uh, would automatically arise the desire for the sexuality again loss of desire to initiate or participate in the sexual activity and you have to respond adequately whenever the partner is having desire for sex so this could be also secondary to certain painful you know incidences like suppose she has vaginal dryness and she had a uh, you know episode of dysperiunia then that would automatically lead to secondary uh, secondarily having decreased desire because she had had that experience of pain and still plus also female has other psychological problems at this juncture of life she may be facing with emptiness syndrome or other kind of grief or frustration or some medical problems certain sadness and sorrow so all these would also you know aggravate this problem next slide please women with hssd hsdd have found to be having an impaired body image majority of us like we recently launched the poise issue edition on obesity and we are all aware about the mid midlife you know midriff bulge during midlife as the estrogen decreases there is a total change in the body composition and the shape of the body from a pear to shapes uh, changes to an apple so often she is not very confident with her own body image would not like to undress herself uh, there is a decrease in her self confidence self worth obviously she you know kind of is nostalgic with her pretty body image what which was previously there and which is lost after the deliveries and in the midlife and menopause so overall she feels that she is not able to give enough you know she doesn't feel connected to the partner and she is not satisfied with her own self so this is common but frequently undiagnosed condition and in the studies it is examined that low sexual desire with distress in lot of premenopausal and postmenopausal females is quite prevalent to a degree of almost 10 to 20 percentage now here it can be inhibited by drugs or conditions that decrease the brain dopamine levels and augment the action of brain serotonin specifically serotonin to uh, alpha receptors and increase the opioids acting at the mu receptors increase in the hypothalamic and mesolimbic dopamine and decrease in the serotonin release all these drugs can selectively activate these stimulatory pathways and reduce the inhibitory pathways so basically what we are looking at is a increase in the dopamine next slide please so how to come to a diagnosis that this female is suffering from the hypoactive sexual desire disorder so you have to take a thorough history try to reach to the root cause whether it is neurobiological whether it is the interpersonal relationship whether it is psychosocial problem which has led to these and this also includes you know bothersome distress distressing symptoms which reduces the motivation to participate in sexual activity or decreases the spontaneous sexual desire right next slide so you have to kind of you know be ready with a questionnaire because sometimes the female might feel you know very embarrassing and not very comfortable answering to a question it is better to you know give her in a questionnaire and you can be supportive enough to make her understand what are the questions mean to say but she should be free uh, on writing what she is wanting to express and at the same time please don't be judgmental reading into those questionnaires that you know i mean don't form any judge judgment for that particular lady now in these symptoms there'll be distressing behavior and there'll be relationship issues because of the low desire and this needs to be addressed the diagnosis of hsdd does not require a total loss of sexual desire but rather a change in the activity level especially in the last 3 months than what was there previously next slide the five question instrument completed by the patient was developed and validated for the use and this was the screener which is used for the decreased sexual desire screener and it is a very good handy uh, you know diagnostic tool for the clinicians to use 
and as per the dsm uh, criteria you can give this uh, yes or no simple responses to these five questions you know because she might not be comfortable answering in detail the purpose of the question 1 to 4 as you can see this is the questionnaire so the i just very simple that the female has to just put a yes or a no and directly it will indicate that where exactly the problem lies and it helps you to reach to the root cause of the hsdd like why this is the the women's answer to the questionnaire can help the clinician address the relevant issues for example if the women thinks that her loss of sexual interest stems from stress or fatigue she may be able to make certain lifestyle changes we can suggest her some options to how to elevate these issues if she is dissatisfied with the relationship or with the partner then you know partner counseling can be of benefit brief office based consulting counseling can be helpful and there is a placid model which can be used where you have to take permission limited information there have to be certain specific suggestions which you can give and intensive therapy a stepped approach specifically would help and if psychotherapy is indicated then patient should be referred to a sex therapist for the management which includes even cognitive behavioral therapy or a therapy which is appropriate for the couple the psychotherapy is recognized treatment for the hsdd and it is typically focused on modifying the thoughts the belief system the behavior and the emotions and relationship and communication and behavior that interfere with the desire like often females feel you know that this is probably not the right time it is just the right time to do some rituals and religious therapies and uh, this is not the right time uh, to you know satisfy the desire of the male so basically these sensate focused therapies are important and they involve a graded series of non demand sensual touching exercises you know i mean it should not be uh, the, uh, demand sexual sensual touching but non demand sensual touching typically used with couples the objective of the sensate focused therapy uh, can we go to the previous slide because that is a very important uh, thing that is typically used with the couples uh, that it reduces their anxiety and they should not be under the pressure of the performance you know you have to uh, like the uh, sensual touching should be there but there is no need for the sexual activity you know you have to just the communication between the partners need to be improved and just like dr maritra sir how just now said that you have to you know it should always feel like it's the first time like treat your wife as your girlfriend and you will get this response again cognitive behavioral therapy is a very important aspect where uh, it distracts from the inhibiting uh, thoughts and gradually it increases the focus on the thoughts and uh, desires for the uh, sexuality and it changes the behavior focusing on the pleasure and not the sexual plan and often they suggest a planned sexual activity and self exploration rather than just the sexual activity or even you can avoid the sexual activity just explore each other again mindfulness is very important you know i mean somebody like rajneesh ji has already said that sexual i mean the sexual act is like a meditation you have to be mindful and this mindful based cognitive therapy is to encourage the participants to connect and engage with the sexuality by learning and practicing a variety of mindfulness exercises in attempt to improve awareness of here and now and acceptance and self compassion so these includes a educative component also and regarding the female sexuality and function so i feel mindfulness is very important there is a role of medical management as well where flibanserine as was discussed in the panel at 100 mg at bed time is a non hormonal and centrally acting postsynaptic serotonin agonist and it increases the uh, decreases the serotonin activity and increases the dopamine and so basically that is the happy hormone and that uh, you know, feel uh, you feel being loved so that is the neurochemical aspect testosterone therapy again is evidence based but off label treatment of the perimenopausal and postmenopausal females so transdermal uh, therapy testosterone can be given in form of patches and it has uh, seen to be effective bispirinone is a, again a serotonin agonist and it is approved as an anxiolytic for the management of generalized anxiety and it also is used uh, as a off label treatment for hsd Tibolone has uh, is used for climacteric complaints, and it also enhances the mood and sexual well-being. So, if the patient is one year postmenopausal, then you can consider using tibolone, and it also treats treats the vaginal atrophy, and it is a great mood elevator. 
Next slide. DHEA has positive results at 100 mg per day and it is basically related to its metabolism to the testosterone. And the lower the cortisol, uh, lower morning cortisol and DHEA was found in these patients and that is how they concluded that supplementing DHEA would help in these females. Next slide. Alternative treatment for aging females is that you have to understand the normal physiological changes which are happening in the mind and the body. And, you know, she will like, like Jadu ki Japti and she would like more of that love and care and attention and longer foreplay would be required and, you know, to take her into that mood and that arousal. And that uh, arousal and orgasm will definitely, you know, give a overall a happy culmination to that act. So again, that desire would automatically be there. And mind well, dear friends, there should be other forms of intimacy as well. You know, it should not be only a bedroom act. And I mean, uh, men should not treat their wife just as a, you know, I mean, sleeping pill. What is, can we go to the previous slide about the intimacy? Just one slide more back. Yeah. No, next slide, please. Yeah, fine. I think we have discussed. We have discussed. Next. Next slide. Yes. So, in conclusion, hypoactive sexual desire disorder in women is important. It is a most important and very common female sexual dysfunction, very less discussed, less treated, I mean, less diagnosed, and obviously that is why less treated. And it is well characterized by more than uh, 30 years. So now we have a proper dedicated questionnaire. We know how to treat it. So it is important that we give it its desired, I mean, its importance which it deserves. The diagnostic assessment is easy. We have to look into all aspects of it, try to reach to the root cause, the psychosocial uh, cause, the biological strategies, try to engage both the parameters. And treatment should focus on the factors that are more distressing to the individual. Every person will have different kind of perspective to it. So it is highly prevalent, undiagnosed condition. It can be effectively management, managed. You just have to spare time for it. Next slide. So thank you so much for a patient hearing and uh, thank you so much for being here again. We can stop the slide share. And I would like to have comments from Sonia Ma. Thank you, Binal, for taking us through this very difficult subject and you have really, really elaborated upon it very lucidly uh, and very nicely expressed that just as we were talking a couple of minutes ago that uh, sexual desire is not just sex it is beyond that and basically you have highlighted that every woman every man has a different perspective of being together and that has to be recognized and treated accordingly it's not that the, everybody is desirous of only one thing they have it has to be taken the personality has to be taken in totality and therefore you know you have to actually individualize your therapy according to the patient who is sitting in front of you many a times you know being i being a fertility specialist and as i just was mentioning we have medicalized the whole whole process of uh, sexual living together you know at this time we have to do this this time we have to do this so whenever we are dealing with a hyperactive sexual desire, also we have to understand that when we are counseling these patients, we are not to become a very, very staunch medical, uh, you know, a counselor. We don't have to medicalize what we are talking to her, you know, because that is something that puts them off completely. They have come to you for help and compassion. And if you don't deal with them with that compassion and with that understanding that they are seeking from you beyond their partner where they are actually having a problem. And if you cannot recognize that and cannot deal with it properly, then probably you're losing your, your, your uh, faith, uh, uh, the faith that she has in you. So we have to be a very, very wholesome kind of a practitioner when it comes to handling these psychosocial sexual desire, uh, desire disorders. We have to be more of a counselor and a psychologist rather than being just a physician and a clinician. So thank you so much, um, Binal, for taking that up so beautifully. And I think we can go back to Sajus now and just, you know let him complete what he was talking about. Yeah, Sajus has regenerated his uh, net, I think. So <laughs> we will be able to finish. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you for that. Uh, I, I feel it's 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 criminal to leave a talk incomplete. 
it's also criminal to leave a sexual act incomplete yeah. so it becomes <laughs> it becomes a, a real crime <laughs> when it's a talk on sexual life because uh, uh, i have had so many di- direct messages which have come on my whatsapp on where did you go that's when i realized that uh, it was reasonably interesting thank you for that <laughs> so thank you neeraj sorry for that i don't know how that laptop got switched off it was actually not a network issue sorry for that so uh, let me just come back to the slide which i was talking about so you are not taking about... laptop as your girlfriend so i just problem is that you are not treating your laptop as your girlfriend <laughs> so take care of your laptop <laughs> since it is neeraj's webinar you know that it is uncensored so it's okay mm-hmm. um uh, so i was talking about the act of achieving self pleasure with sex toys once upon a time um uh, there was a thought that uh, it was being used by uh, those women who had excessive libido so we used to look look down upon them but we do understand uh, these days that the use of sex toys has become reasonably safe because you have commercially very good quality ones that are available and there is a lot of recent research that is talking about how an act of achieving self pleasure with sex toys can in fact be a learning lesson for the woman herself as well as how it can help her guide her partner to give her more number of orgasm so that she doesn't have that problem of an orgasm gap okay now with a sex toy she tends to understand the kind of penetration that she loves she tries to explore her body a little bit more with or without sex toys she understands those parts of her body which is actually giving her orgasm a little bit more than or a little bit different from how it used to be earlier so that is the importance of an act of achieving self pleasure and the use of sex toys in the best manner possible so women have decided uh, uh, a lot of women who took part in various surveys and studies related to this thought that they understood their body better and they could actually guide their partner to achieve better orgasms so on that note i will give you some take home messages which i think would be so very important one is there will be a reduction in quality and frequency of sex as a woman reaches midlife and menopause may just be a condition belief which we are made to believe and we can definitely think beyond what happens between the legs we can definitely think what happens beyond a dry vagina because the real sex be it after 40 or before 40 happens between your years so if you can keep those mental health problems and mental health status intact if you can keep your mental problems away then you are en route to achieving a better sex research suggests that women who are experiencing fewer orgasms gets accustomed to expecting fewer orgasms which is termed as the orgasm gap which is something which all of us need to believe and if you actually have in, can increase the frequency of sexual act if you can actually experience more then you are expecting more and on the whole your sexual act is going to be get much better body image issues are an issue mental health issues are also a primary contributor towards lesser frequency and lesser quality so tackle take help especially mental health support if you require deal with your body image issues and remember that it doesn't really matter how you look your sex can still be as interesting as it has ever been you need to create time for each other so ensure that you engage in activities with your spouse be it watching a movie or or joining couple groups or going on a date in the late night or going on a late night drive or it's about watching a movie together exercise diet and good sleep are so very important exercise is so important because obesity sometimes is a, a barrier towards effective penetration and achievement of an orgasm so work on your body when you exercise you are actually increasing the blood supply to your genitals that can help you deal with the lack of lubrication that you might be suffering from for a man it might correlate to better blood flow and better erection and sustained erection diet is so very important ensure that you are eating lots of food which is rich in antioxidants that actually can help you achieve more number of orgasms and for a man a better and a sustainable erection 
good sleep heals a lot of things it actually repairs your vagina just like any other organ so 7 to 8 hours of good sleep has been associated with more enjoyable sex in a man as well as woman explore newer styles of sex one is about position but much more important is do it in an unconventional locations it could be a kitchen it could be a quickie in the washroom it could be a sofa in your living room it could be anything but definitely explore new styles of sex self pleasure and sex toys as i just mentioned have a definite role to play so do not look down upon them communicate regularly understand the fantasies with which your partner is achieving self pleasure understand what is that kind of lingerie that your husband is thinking of when he is because of which he is getting good erection and ejaculation so if you can try to emulate that you might actually ending up reigniting the spark and having better sex for the husband ask your wife what is that which she is fantasizing about and try to emulate a little bit of that communicating regularly before during and after the sexual act is so very important sometimes it does becomes like a core people don't talk as they age they just finish some 10 penetrations and the and the husband walks away once it is done and that's definitely a bad sign of a good sexual act so communicating regularly is so very important if you are getting something out of that sexual act tell that to your partner because he feels more encouraged if you aren't getting something if you are not able to reach orgasm because he is following a particular position or a particular style and if you want him to change from what you have understood about your body with your self pleasure acts tell him that communication both ways is really really going to help avoid familiarity and that's why i was talking about unconventional positions and unconventional locations which you are not used to or accustomed to can actually help to ignite the spark and getting a domestic help to lessen your care giving burden gives you free time and it gives you much more time with your spouse because as i mentioned in my talk earlier your children are an investment only for maybe 16 to 18 years but your partner or your spouse is an investment for a lifetime so ever ever you had to choose between your partner on one side versus your children on the other side always choose your partner because she is going to be or he is going to be an investment for a lifetime as they say life does begin at 40 appears to be a very very important motivational statement with lot with all the limitations attached from when you live from 40 onwards but remember that sex life can definitely be reignited for at 40 because it's not just about hormones it's not about an atrophic vagina it's much more it's between your years what you think about sex is actual sex thank you so much on the note thank you so much and sorry for that uh, that that uh, interruption that was there and i think it's a pleasure to be here today i think i have also learned a, a lot of new things thank you thank you sajesh for finishing your act and giving giving us the academic orgasm <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh my god thank you <laughs> so thank you for coming back and give competing tact <laughs> oh god <laughs> yes sonia madam was planning to run away yes i was just i was just thinking uh, neeraj those yes. days you know uh, whether it was a mechanical sex or an uh, emotional sex but uh, both the mother and the daughter will have be having children simultaneously so the sex was still going on but now with uh, the mother stops it much early so of course that is not the only evidence of uh, having sex but still uh, those mm. days it used to go on and on but now i think uh, oppressed by lots of worldly matters lots of pressures in every field i think this is also coming down thank you so much thank you thank you madam yes thank dilpa you. <laughs> thank you sir uh, dr shaijes uh, dr binal those thanks for indeed such a great talks wonderful talks so with this uh, uh, within no time we have come to the end of this academic session so with such interesting panel and great talks we, this is the, now it's my proud privilege to deliver vote of thanks so i would like to thank our office foxy office bearers first of all uh, dr rishikesh pai our president our secretary Gen general dr madhuri patel vice president dr asha bakshi and dr alka pande ims office bearers 
President Dr. Pushpa Sethi and Secretary Dr. Aarti Gupta. All the chairpersons, all are both are wonderful speakers, all the delegates who could join this uh, webinar, and ICOG Chair Dr. Lakshmi Srikhande and Secretary Je Dr. Ash Dr. Ashok for uh, um, crediting today's uh, webinar with three ICOG points. Our digital partner, Medisage. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Pushpa Ma'am, Dr. Aarti Ma'am. Thanks. I thank everyone and uh, our own Dr. Neera Jadav, without whose untiring efforts, this such these meetings, those webinars would not have been possible. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Dilpreet, for moderating all the sessions because I know uh, Dr. Uh, uh, our uh, second memo, she was not uh, able to join because of uh, she is ill, but you single-handedly managed so well. So you did really wonderful job. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.